Gunners Collective. Back at it, you already know. And another one. You know we're back at it, homie. I said, bye, 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 you can tell by that thumbnail, it's the Savage Studios, right? Um, Let's give a profile. You know, the rise and fall of a YouTuber. Um, a semi-famous YouTuber. Uh, to some people, one of their favorite YouTubers. To some people, one of the most despised and hated YouTubers or hated on YouTubers. Now, a lot of people like to correlate mine and his attitudes towards YouTube. And that's furthest from the truth. Gar! Handle it. We're nothing like each other. Never was, cuz, never shall be. Um, two different stilos, two different narratives, two different messages. Um, but in a menudo style, in a direct fashion... I thought that if for no other reason I should present his profile because I actually knew who this guy was. Deep down inside, without even really face-to-face -face knowing him, I knew a lot what was going behind his mind, behind the eyes, you know, what the eyes peer out and see, you know, the mind thinketh. And this man definitely was confused, but at the same time, was a pretty intelligent individual, but not intelligent enough to keep his mouth shut. Now... <clears throat> My interactions with um, Savage Studios go way back, and I'm going to tell you guys an untold story never told before, because I just realized it a while back after having conversations with a couple of my homeboys. It came to light. It got brought up, and I said, that's where I knew that Valto from, um, before his untimely demise. But we're going to get to that. Let's talk about the YouTuber himself, the man, uh, Steven Michael Sagala. You know, he came into YouTube, and just like any other channel, you know, had this vision, had this idea of maybe, hey, let me try this platform out. It's a social media age. It's entertainment. Maybe he could entertain people. And I'm not going to lie. The guy had charisma. Um, the guy could definitely tell a story. And he had that look. He had that look that a lot of Latino and Mexicano YouTubers were craving. Um, someone that looked like them. Someone who looked similar. You know, for the longest of times, YouTube didn't have too many Mexicanos or brown people representing us. You know, the doors weren't closed to us or shut to us. It's just a lot of politics and a lot of things that we do in life. We close those doors on ourselves. Eventually, over time, uh, different people started to interact with the Internet, with social media, and people realized there was a bag to get. Um, maybe there was some clout to get. Maybe there was some acknowledgement, some respect. Um, and maybe it was just time for our people to be put on the map as far as social media goes. And let it be known, man, that the Latino consumer... The, the Hispanic consumer, whatever you want to call them. I don't like to use the word Hispanic. I think that's a propaganda made up word. I just don't like it. I don't even like Latino too much. You know, I like brown. Um, raza way. But they, these are the words that that categorize the people that I rock with, right? Maybe it was our time to shine. So along comes uh, Mr. Sagala. Savage Studios. Takes the name Savage Studios. And has a video that goes semi-viral or viral which was the video he did about Gabriel Fernandez, the kid who ultimately was abused and, and, and you know, succumbed to his injuries. And we know that story. I actually talked about his, the mother and the stepfather yesterday in a video. Um, but he actually brought that to light. A lot of, prior to people watching that video, a lot of people didn't even know the Gabriel Fernandez story or who he was. Um, so you got to respect that guy for shedding light. That was the first time I had ever seen it. And then he referred me to Netflix, to which I got more ingrained into the details of the story. Menudo. Um, so I could give him the kudos on that. But one thing I will say was, this guy had an attitude. You know, I spotted it right from the gate. The nonchalant, flippant attitude that he had. Basically, the you can't get me, you can't touch me attitude. Is what separates him from me. See, I know I can be touched. I know I can be reached. Um, I'm always of the understanding that... You know, just because you say things on YouTube doesn't make them real life or doesn't make them... There's not no bubble around us protecting us. There's not no force field, homie, saying, I'm a YouTuber, you're not. Anyone can be a YouTuber and anybody can get got, and that's facts. You know, so you need to treat people with the utmost respect as much as you can. 
You know, there's always going to pe be people that are antagonizing you, try to get under your skin for one reason or another, whether they think it's funny, they have an agenda, they just don't like the fact that you're making that dough or coming up. They're going to hate on you. So they're going to simply try to twist things up, twist your narrative, uh, cut videos, just make you look bad. And this is what was happening to Savage Studios, but he kept reciprocating the hate, you know. His channel went from telling prison stories and telling his own personal journey stories to a, a, a channel of chaos, a channel of back and forth with trolls, a channel of back and forth with other YouTubers. I myself had a second there or maybe even a minute, I'll say, where me and him actually went back and forth just based on our attitudes, did it. We we bat we Sasuke. I don't like you. I thought you. you don't like me. I don't like you. But to what degree of liking me? Because I see I don't like you more. Darn, tell him I don't like him. Right and say that with your chest, Wes. Right. Um, we definitely didn't see eye to eye in a lot of situations. And what I thought it was was at the time that he was doing his thing, he took a step back from YouTube Savage Studios, and I actually ingrained myself into YouTube, and I posed the biggest threat to what he thought was his genre. Um, now, I don't play them games. I don't care who blows past, who comes up, respects to everyone. I hope everybody wins. I just hope everybody's aware and at the same time respectful while doing it and be humble. Humble consistency, man, and being real is all that I, you know, that's what I throw out there every day. Um, this guy definitely was none of that. Okay, now to have had a conversation with Savage Studios in the background, to which I had many, um, he was a very humbled individual. Um, he was totally different from this persona that he put on in front of the camera. You know, a lot of people make up characters. You know, there's characters when it comes to the big screen. There's characters that you see on your TV. Tom didn't like Jerry. Jerry didn't like Tom. But in real life, Terry and John were camaradas, right? There's a lot of stuff that you don't know that goes on behind the scenes. Um, Savage did tap in from time to time. The very first time that he did tap in with me, he said, hey, I see you're new on the YouTube scene. What's up? Would you mind doing some type of collab with me in the near future? Um, I wouldn't mind it. And to what I, to which I told him, absolutely not. Now, there was a reason for me to tell him absolutely not. And for those of you that haven't been around YouTube for a while and doesn't ex exactly know who Steven Segala was, um, his mouth was the reason. There were certain situations and certain disrespectful things that he said that I didn't want to be involved in because I didn't feel the same way he felt. See, the people that he disrespected, I respect ultimately. No matter what you or anyone else could say, could never bring me to that level of disrespect um, because I know better and I simply don't. You know, I don't hate those individuals and I don't disrespect them if they even exist. Fairy dust. We don't know what's going on in this world. Who exists, who doesn't. All I know is for facts, I'm not on the same disrespectful terms that that individual was. Um, period. You know, um, so I had to decline that offer. You know, I knew that he could help elevate my social status of equality. I knew that he could help elevate me in YouTube because he blew up after that video about Gabriel Fernandez. You know, he was at 100,000 subscribers to which something went on with his channel and he actually took a step back um, and I blew past him in the sixth foe. <laughs> riding on six, uh, riding on Bo Bogues, tipping on foe foes, right? But I was doing my thing, but there was no hatred there. There was no animosity. I just simply didn't want to do no business with this man because of his mouth. Ultimately, his mouth would be his demise, and we're going to talk about that. So let me tell you a little bit of an untold story. I was chopping it up with a couple of my homeboys, my good-ass camaradas, just the other day. And uh, his name came up. Damn, whatever happened to Savage Studios? I said, yeah, he's, 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 he's gone. Hasta la bye-bye, you know, rest in peace or whatever the case may be. I said, when you're pushing a certain narrative and, and doing certain things and going back and forth with people constantly, it is only a matter of time before you get got or got got, right? Um, and in his case, that's ultimately what happened, allegedly. Now, um, we got to conversating and the homie said, yeah, I heard that Vato did time. I said, yeah, he did time several places. And then it clicked in my mind and I remembered. You know, I've told a story about, you know, being transferred to Jamestown the very first time and getting off in R&R &R because Jamestown wasn't a righteous yard at that time. It wasn't a place where Norteños could function um, at that time. You know, um, so I was already aware coming from Tracy that I was not to stay there. I, had, you know, I had a certain amount of time or whatever the case may be. I don't want to speak politics, but I had to get the hell up off that yard. It wasn't for me. If I chose to stay there, then I would become what was there. Um, and at that point in time, I was fully functioning. I was active and I'm functioning. Guard, let them know. Right. I was doing my thing. So there was no possible way I could find myself staying there. Um, 
my mistakes I'm saying, you know, maybe I should have just stood there. I don't know. But at that point in time, you know, I was about the cause and the cause was about me and was in, it was in, you know, infused in, in my blood and the way of thinking. Um, I was willing to make that ultimate sacrifice or do whatever I had to do to get the hell up off that yard because at the same time, it was not for me. So anyways, getting there, I've told the story. Um, I actually ran into someone who I recognized that was on a lista and I got off. You know, I got off where I was mad at. I took flight, didn't even make it out of R&R. I was one of those type of people, and I've always been those type of people. Get off where you're mad at. Handle it now so you don't got to do it later. Stay ready so you can got to get ready. Um, I seen my time, my opportunity, a target, and I did my thing. Now, there was no metal involved, no weaponry. You know, it was just hands-on. But I was able to do enough damage um, for my likings. So I get placed in the oil. Administrative segregation is another, word, uh, another uh, name for the hole. And upon my time in the hole, I sat there for a couple months before I would, I would get my ride up, go through the motions. I had to serve some whole time. They wanted to say, why'd you do it? I said, da, 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 I don't know. Da, 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 I don't know. Right? Guard, that, that's you. You tell why I did it. Right? Because he's a fucking gang member. Right? Whatever, whatever the case may be, um, I just didn't want to be involved in saying anything. You know, you figure that out. You know what I mean? The hard way. Not the long way. The hard way. Or the hard and long way. I don't know. However you figure it out, that's up to you. I eventually ended up going to committee and was transferred out of there um, to a righteous, you know, yard. Um, but prior to that, I remember there was a lot of individuals in that oil. See, the, everyone, there's so many different groups. You know, you have active gang members, you have non-actives, you have uh, 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 weirdos, you have um, crips and bloods and the sprinkle the woods in, brother. They're always there, brother. They're, sprinkle the woods and There was just a lot of people there. One of the guys that was there, now that I recall, was Stephen Michael Segala. Um, Savage Studios. He wasn't known as Savage Studios at that time. Now, at this time, I remember seeing him um, going towards showers and going to the yard, and they had their own yard. I remember I was an active North Daniel, so there was about six of us in the oil. We would go program on our own yard, do our thing, do our program, you know, uh, refer to the Gangster Handbook to figure that out. Um, but that's what we were doing. Um, he was part of a group of guys that were no longer active. They were a dropout gang. I don't want to speak their name because I'm not speaking it into existence. It already exists. It is what it is. But he was functioning with them fellas. Um, I remember he had corn rolls in his head, sagging his pants a little bit. Struck me as odd because I had never, to this point in prison, seen a Mexicano um, looking that way. Unless he was part of like a black gang, like a Crip or a Blood. Um, then you would see Balthas with braids in their hair and doing their thing, golds in their mouth. And it was what it was. Um, but I had never seen... You know, a Balto from Southern California rocking like that, period. And the way he talked on the tier, saying the N-word several times, was just... I took it as derogatory and very disrespectful because, you know, we're in prison here. So, okay, to, to, what, to, to what degree of prison we're at? I don't know. I'm glad I got the hell out of here, right? Um, but he was definitely there. Um, now, there were some other stories that I could tell you about what was said and what happened on that tier. Not between myself and him. Because like I said, I didn't know him at the time. Didn't know he was going to become a YouTuber, a semi-famous YouTuber and blow up. I didn't know none of this at this time. I just seen him for what he was, which was basically at that time a degenerate um, that was non-functioning. He was doing his own program. Um, he was a little boisterous on the tier, so I could see where that came into play. A little loud. Um, but that was pretty much our interactions there. I would see him when he would walk by the showers. I didn't hit him with the what's up or none of that. Um, I acknowledged him like if he was not even there. He was invisible to me, yet I seen him. Um, so remembering this and hearing his name, um, I remember my homeboys brought it up. I said, man, I did time with that. That about was in Jamestown. You know, I was in the oil. They, you did time with them. They were all getting ready. I said, no, 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 hold on. That's I need a guard. I was in oil. Okay, that explains everything. Um, so that was it. I ended up ultimately going to ICC, which is committee being transferred up out of there. And he went to where he went to, or if he stood, I, I can't call it like an alcoholic. One thing I do know that's for sure is I was out of there. Now, here we go into the future, right? Years and years and years later, you know, I'd get home every day from work, man. I'd lay down just like anyone else, man. I'm tired after working a long day's work. And nowadays, what we do as people is we don't necessarily watch TV unless you're watching ESPN for the highlights. Utterly, Aaron Rodgers is going to retire, right? We're watching the highlights or we go scroll our, our phones, right? So YouTube was always popping up and I started to see this guy pop up. I didn't put two and two together. I didn't recognize him. He had several tattoos that he did not have at that time. Um, you know, and, and just ultimately looked different with his long hair. And then I think what stood out to me the most was his old lady, Brittany at that time. You know, he was doing his couples thing. He tried to do to YouTube what other people try to do. He tried to play every aspect and every angle. And I wasn't mad at him for it. 
Um, because I'd like to share some big old brand new, if you hear me, call me. Right? It's, it's, it's still not over. Um, anyways, but I definitely uh, seen her. She's what attracted me to the channel. Then I started watching his older uh, uh, videos and was interested. It was interesting. Um, when it became less interesting is when he started to yell and scream and go at it with people. And that truly and ultimately was the demise and the decline of his channel, isn't it? I mean, that's what happens. You know, that's what happens in life when you when you become, when you think you become bigger than everyone else around you. When you think you're different, you set yourself apart. You know, ultimately you find out real quick that you're no different from the next man. That is why I keep myself humble. That is why when I meet people in, in public or, or, or I talk to people um, and people always say, I'm your fan. I watch you and you're not my fan. Don't get it twisted. You're never going to be my fan. You are of equal stature to me, of equal status. You are a subscriber and a supporter, and I appreciate you. And if you have a channel, I would love to subscribe and support you as well. Okay, there's never going to be a difference with me when it comes to that. I know my place. I'm not bigger or better or badder than anybody. And that's why I keep it respectful with certain entities and certain people that deserve that. Because I know what time it is. See, I'm very aware and I know what's up. I've been where I say I've been, unlike other people who've never been there, but like to portray like they've done that. Bang, bang. Not the gun, gun, gang, gang, right? I've, I've been there. Not the guy, let go. Yeah, he was there. See, I told you I was there. Um, one thing is for sure, though. It's for sure. Um, I know my place. You know, I know my place and I respect that. Now, let's get back to uh, uh, the bottle who did not know his place and ultimately is why he's in a different place, um, you know, as we speak. This guy um, decided to take his channel to a different level. And that's what happens when people become ingrained in YouTube. And this is what happened with Savage Studios. He started to be ingrained with the make-believe of YouTube. That he said, she said, that she said, that he said, right? And when you start to take on uh, all kinds of beefs and, and, and battles and, and the nonchalantness and, and the screaming over each other and the wolfing, it becomes repetitive, it becomes redundant, it becomes basura, trash. People don't want to tune in no more. So his views started to decline just based on that. Now, people love drama. They love it, okay? That's part of our nature. Um, we love watching fights. We love seeing war. We love seeing sangre. We love seeing drama. But at the end of the day, you can only see so much before it becomes tiresome. And you get tired of it. You know, people like a, a good love story sometimes. You feel me? They're, they're, they like winning. Um, but this guy's, uh, 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 content became repetitive in the fact that it went from telling good stories because he was an actual good speaker and told good stories to infusing beefs with it. Now, when we first had our conflict, I mean, I hate to think about it and speak on it because I don't like wolfing on a dead man, especially. Um, but I will say this, when we had our conflict, it came out of nowhere. It came more out, out of envy and jealousy on his part, not my part. Um, I didn't, I couldn't care otherwise, you know, I was hoping that he progressed and what he was doing, I was trying to do something different. Um, he first got at me concerning some boxing match or fight that he wanted to do. Um, he started to get disrespectful with his opponent. Um, and I wasn't trying to go that route. And ultimately me and him had words to which he went to the next level and started disrespecting moms and kids and oh my, right. Um, and then we had our words back and forth. You know, you can only take so much as a man to which you need to defend yourself. Uh, the defense of oneself is real. One never knows, does one, how, how it really gets. But one thing is for sure, um, we ba basically went back and forth to which there was a phone call that had to be made. That It was mediated through the homeboy Big Rojo. And then he called me and he called Savage and he said, hey, bro, you know what I mean? This ain't cool. You know, you guys are both uh, decent dudes. Um, you, cool, because you're my homeboy, this guy, whatever, right? But anyways, a phone call was made to which I had a conversation with them. He admitted fault and guilt in some of the situations and decided to wave a white flag. And we came to the, to the understanding that if we had ever seen each other in a dark alley, somebody was going to come out with one less eyeball, right? And that was that. That's what men do. And I respected that and I kept my distance because I seen his channel and his character declining at a rapid pace. Now, ultimately, we all know what happens. And if you don't know what happened, man, refer to about six months ago, there were several videos made on it. Um, this man met his uh, uh, ultimate demise. You know, whether it was due to YouTube or a personal beef or whatever the case may be, allegedly, I have no idea. I have no opinion either, either way. Um, all I do know is it was a rise, a fast meteoric, meteoric rise to stardom, YouTube stardom and fame, and then an ultimate decline. Now, I do know this man was a loving father, loved his son, King. 
Um, this man had, you know, issues just like anyone else would have with their baby mama. But I'm sure he was, he was, you know, that was his business and he was doing what he did. You know, again, um, I'm sure there was a lot going on. Um, but at the end of the day, just like anyone else, he had a family that loved him. You know, a, a very independent mother who was willing to, you know, uh, 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 stand by her son's side. Just a lot of good family. Um, but what was said was said. You know, when you speak on people or you disrespect people or you're rocking a narrative, man, you have to stand on your, you know, you got to stand on that ground. You got to stand on what you truly said and what you truly believe. Now, there's a lot of people, myself included, um, that know not to ever go a certain route or to overstep our boundaries um, and play ourselves out. Because ultimately, there's things on YouTube you cannot talk about and things that shouldn't be said um, in the public eye. And you have to be of understanding to know that. And anyone that's incarcerated or has been incarcerated should know better. So they do better. Um, this man knew better and continued with his narrative just based on um, that was the persona. You know, when you have a certain persona that's built and it's, man, I don't care what anyone, anybody could get it, man. It's all good. You know, then you got to stand on that. You got to keep that same energy. Now, there's other stories I could tell you about when he did not keep that energy. You know, when people pulled up on him and the energy was called 911, when there was different types of energy. Okay, the, to what degree of energy? Gar! It was a different type of energy, right? Um, but ultimately, this man found himself in a place in his life where um, his YouTube career had suddenly failed. He was not getting the views anymore. And it wasn't due to his content. It was due to his attitude towards people, his aggressiveness towards people, and him not being able to just keep his mouth shut in certain situations. And, and it's unfortunate that someone that had the potential to really blow up and be one of the first uh, Mexicanos, you know, in the genre or in the, on YouTube to do that, um, chose a different path in life. And ultimately now he ended up no longer living. Um, and it's happened. I'm not going to talk about his death. Um, you know, that that happened. You know, anyone that knows, knows. And if you don't, like I said, refer to the Gangster Handbook. It's in there um, under 1A section article BC. Now, with that being said, um, I just wanted to do this profile on him because there's a lot of people don't know about individuals. You might think you know someone and you really don't. Behind the scenes, they could be the coolest guy. And I tell you, I used to conversate with this guy every great once in the blue moon. We were not friends, so don't hold that against me. Um, but we used to conversate. He was a very humble. The humility was real. Um, and then he'd get on a video and, and call my mom's all types of names and stuff. I don't know what his problem was or what he was doing, what he was trying to portray. But I sure wish I'd have got him before, right? Anyways, I did. But that's what it is. I just wasn't able to get him. Um, I'm talking about as far as on a conversation. Um, and he's gone. You know, he's gone. His channel will forever be ingrained in YouTube. People that will go back to his channel watch. Um, again, man, I don't condone a lot of the things he said or a lot of the things that he was portraying. Uh, but at the end of the day, I'm not going to hate on no one, um, or disrespect anyone. It just is what it is. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the profile. There's many other untold stories about Savage that I just can't speak on at this particular point in time, um, due to legal, uh, legal purposes and things of that nature that are going on that are out of my hands and don't, and, and, and we don't need to involve ourselves in that. But anyways, with that being said, man, I hope that you move forward with a purpose. I hope you enjoyed the content of the day. I hope you get everything that you want coming to you. Remember, like and subscribe. Hey, come mess with your boy. Hit me with that thumbs up or that thumbs down. Doesn't matter. Heavy's going to be the head that wears the crown. Continue to strive and struggle and hustle for what you believe in. And when I say hustle, I don't mean hustle someone out of their pockets. I mean move smooth with a purpose and fast. Generate that income so that way you can take care of your family and you can be financially set to do the things you want to in life. If it's not a financial thing and it's just an emotional thing, well, sounds good. Give yourself a hug, man. Honor the guard. Give him a hug. And this is the gun. Bang, bang. And in that fashion.